Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is going to be my new Batman video. There was a new report that was published by the Direct website about their plans for a new version of the Joker in Matt Reeves' Batman trilogy. So we'll break it all down. There's a bunch of Easter eggs. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We'll do a new Amazon giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave all your predictions for the new version of the Joker in the Batman movies. So starting with the really important stuff first, number five, the Direct website published a report this past week claiming that Matt Reeves isn't just going to use a new version of the Joker in his new Batman trilogy of movies, he's going to use the Joker character way more in a much bigger way than any previous Batman movie franchise before. Not counting the TV series like Batman the Animated Series or the live action TV series like Gotham or the Adam West 1966 Batman series because there were multiple appearances from those versions of the Joker. We're really just talking about the big movie franchises. And even though there's a lot of question about whether or not we'll ever see Joaquin Phoenix's Joker again in another movie, they've been talking about them doing it, there's been talk about them not doing it. He was great as that character, but Todd Phillips keeps saying that he never intended for his Joker movie to cross over with Robert Pattinson's Batman movies. You just wanted to make fun of me. Really good example of previous Jokers, though. Heath Ledger only appeared as the Joker once in The Dark Knight. Jared Leto technically only appeared in the Suicide Squad film, even though technically he's the version of the Joker referenced in the Birds of Prey movie. He never appeared on screen during that. Jack Nicholson only appeared in the first Michael Keaton Batman movie in 1989. Fun fact though, had they continued with that iteration of the Batman franchise in a fifth Batman movie, that would have been titled Batman Unchained. They had planned to bring back Jack Nicholson's Joker as a hallucination in Batman's mind, filming new footage with Jack Nicholson. I think we could all agree though that as cool as that might have been to see him come back and reprise his role, we were much better off moving to the Christopher Nolan Dark Knight trilogy of Batman films. So number four, this new Joker report goes on to state that the plan for this new version of the Joker is to cast another major actor. There have been a lot of rumors about who that could be. I'll mention them in a second. In the Joker's story arc in the new Batman trilogy of movies will be a bigger version, bigger buildup of say like the Christopher Nolan Dark Knight trilogy Joker with Heath Ledger. So think about the way that the Dark Knight trilogy treated the Joker character. At the end of Batman Begins, Gordon tells Batman that a new costume crazy person is serviced and literally is leaving playing cards as calling cards, shows him the Joker playing card from a recent crime scene, and that's just meant to be the end tag scene teaser that the Joker would be the main villain of the next movie, The Dark Knight. Heath Ledger was amazing in that, but because he unfortunately passed away before The Dark Knight Rises was made, they opted not to do any Joker during that third movie. Although after he did pass away, Heath Ledger's sisters apparently did an interview claiming that he had told them he planned to return in some fashion to The Dark Knight Rises. We don't really know what his role would have been during that movie given that Tom Hardy's Bane was supposed to be the main villain if he would have teamed up with him or just simply taken advantage of all the chaos that he was causing in Gotham. So number three, per this report, the new Robert Pattinson Batman movie version of the Joker is supposed to be a more drawn out version of the Dark Knight trilogy version of the Joker storyline tease him at the end of the first movie with a reference or a playing card, something small but obvious letting you know that the Joker exists within this universe. He's simply too big to swerve on, they sell way too many toys, make way too much money to not do any kind of Joker at all. Then he'd appear on screen in some fashion during the Batman 2, whatever that sequel winds up being, but he wouldn't be the main villain of that movie like he was during The Dark Knight. He'd just be a side character in the way that say like Colin Farrell has said that his version of the Penguin is in the first Batman movie and has some great scenes, but he's not meant to be the main villain and he doesn't have a ton of scenes in terms of quantity compared to some of the other villains. But they use that second Batman movie to develop the new Joker character more and then he becomes the main villain of the third Batman movie. Right now the Robert Pattinson and Matt Reeves Batman movies are only being described as a trilogy so I don't know if they have plans to do more Batman with Robert Pattinson after that. I think it just depends on how things go. I did a video last week about how Warner Brothers has a desire to do more Batman spin-off movies for characters like the Riddler and Catwoman given the success of the Joaquin Phoenix standalone Joker movie. So there will be more Batman related movies even if they don't do a fourth Robert Pattinson Batman movie. But number two, you've also probably seen the rumors about who might wind up playing that new version of the Joker. I've seen a lot of recent speculation about Willem Dafoe, although I think he's just a fan theory right now more than an actual possibility. Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson just did the Lighthouse movie together a while ago. They were a great pair together. Willem Dafoe is an amazing actor. He's played some amazing villains. His version of the Green Goblin in the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies is still iconic. You're an amazing creature, Spider-Man. You and I are not so different. 
but I don't think that the type of characters that he typically plays are in the tone of what Matt Reeves is talking about with his Batman movie. He said that his new Batman movie or multiple new movies, if we're talking about a trilogy, are tonally somewhere between Tim Burton's more stylized Batman, Christopher Nolan's more realistic Batman, in what I would call the heightened reality of the neo-gothic Batman the Animated Series. If you've seen some of the set pictures from the Batman movie this past year, you've probably seen some of the architecture too sort of reflects that. Sort of a little bit more gothic than what you saw during Christopher Nolan's Batman movies, but not quite so crazy as what we saw during the Tim Burton films. So until they actually cast someone and we see him on screen, I'm imagining a Joker somewhere between Jack Nicholson's Joker and Heath Ledger's Joker. Terrorizes. Wait till they get a load of me. Yes, Joaquin Phoenix would be amazing in the new Batman movies, but I've already done a couple videos explaining how Todd Phillips doesn't want his Joker to cross over with the Batman movies. He seems completely opposed to it. The other new Joker actor that everyone's been talking about this year has actually been Johnny Depp, and it's just a rumor right now. I don't have any strong feelings about him particularly. Personally, as long as whoever this new Joker winds up being just delivers a great performance, I don't care who Matt Reeves winds up picking. I try not to have too many expectations like that because when Heath Ledger was first announced as the Joker for Dark Knight, the internet just completely hated the idea. Cut to a couple years later after the movie and he became the most beloved Joker of all time next to Mark Hamill's Joker. I'll show you. When the chips are down, these, uh, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. The exact same thing happened for the Joaquin Phoenix Joker when he was announced too. People freaked out and suddenly he's now one of the new best Jokers of all time. So speaking of which, number one, my favorite versions of the Joker. If you include all the TV series, including the animated ones, the spin-off movies, there have been at least 16 different major versions of the Joker. So I'm just going to do my top five in reverse order here. All these are great performances, by the way. Starting with number five, the Cesar Romero Joker from the 1966 Adam West Batman series. He's a classic through and through. If you've never seen any of his Joker, be sure to check it out at some point. Number four, the Cameron Monaghan Jerome version of the Joker from Gotham. Even though I didn't like everything that they did with that TV series, I feel like he did something really interesting with that TV version of the Joker. Number three is Jack Nicholson's Joker from the 1989 Batman movie. Even though his version of the Joker was very different from the canonical comic book Joker backstory, he just delivered an iconic performance, and he was my first movie Joker that I ever saw as a child. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? What? I always ask that of all my prey. I just like the sound of it. Number two is Joaquin Phoenix's Joker from the Joker movie. However you feel about the movie itself, his performance was amazing. Uh, Murray, one small thing. Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? And as you probably guess, my number one pick is actually a tie between Heath Ledger's Joker from The Dark Knight and Mark Hamill's Joker from Batman the Animated Series. Normally, people only think about the live action movies when you think about the best versions of the characters, but Mark Hamill has one of the most iconic Joker portrayals in history from any of the movies, any of the TV series, and Batman the Animated Series itself is one of the best TV series of any TV series in history. Batman Mask of the Phantasm is also one of the best Batman movies of all time. It just happens to be an animated movie. Next year after we hopefully get to watch this new Batman movie, I will re-rank my new Batman movie tier list. But post all your reactions in the comments below. Who do you want to play this new version of the Joker and who is your favorite version of the Joker right now? The Batman movie and pretty much every other movie that went on break because of the virus is getting ready to start filming again this summer. So as we get more details about the movie and learn more about the story, I'll do more big Batman bonus videos. But leave all your requests in the comments below. Everyone click here for my other brand new Batman trilogy video about the villains and the new spin-off movies and click here for that brand new Bill and Ted face the music trailer with Keanu Reeves. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.